Hello friends, I welcome you all to Nandip Academy for UPSC and MPSC. Today we are going to analyze the Hindu column dated 23rd December 2020. Let's begin with the first article. The first article is titled Pandemic Resilience. So what is this article about? As all of you are aware that a parliamentary, parliamentary standing committee has been formed to give recommendations on a comprehensive public health act so what is the need of this act what are the recommendations of this committee what are the observations of this committee and what is the state of public health care in india and what needs to be done to improve so that there is an equitable health care system so that is all what we are going to see in this article to understand the article let's first look have a look at some words the first is resilience. So resilience is a noun which means the capacity to recover quickly. The second word is kernel, which means, which is also a noun. Kernel actually refers to a soft inner part of fruit. So here, in this context, kernel means central or the most important aspect. And the third word is omnibus, which is a noun which means huge or big. Let's have a look at the first slide. So the pandemic has, has had an impact on the health infrastructure. It has exposed the condition of the health infrastructure that is prevalent in the country. And it is in this context that the government has decided to ask the parliamentary standing, parliament standing committee to give recommendations uh, and to suggest measures for establishing a comprehensive public health act. There was a need to reform the fragmented health system in India. And as all of you are aware, the corona pandemic has exposed the profiteering and the commerce that, is, that surrounds the healthcare system in India. Health professionals were more concerned about the monetary aspect than the health aspect of their patients, and thus the need of this comprehensive public health act. Let's see the next slide. The uh, national health profile data has shown that. 0.55 government hospital beds are available for 1,000 for 1,000 people. That is an extremely low percentage. So it shows that there is no investment in public health infrastructure, and the corona pandemic has seen many people leaving urban areas, going to the rural areas. As you're aware, the rural areas are already have a weakened in health infrastructure, and to add to this to their burden there was an flux from the urban areas and so the entire health infrastructure both in the urban and rural areas have been exposed what are the recommendations of this committee the first recommendation the committee gave was to form an obnivious law a, a, a law that would have everything under its ambit that would cover everything Second would be that there should be no profiteering during crisis. During the corona pandemic, uh, the monetary aspect or money was even more important than the life of the patient. So only if a person could shell out money, only then that person was admitted. So there should be, this has taught us a lesson that there should be no profiteering during crisis. And at the same time, it is also recommended that there should be a robust cashless health insurance. What are the observations of this committee? The committee has observed that there is an absence of insurance cover for many. There is an oversight on hospitals. An oversight on hospital needs to be put in place to take care of patients during such a pandemic like the COVID. There is also a breach of trust aspect observed as there is a rise in the premium during the crisis. Example, 25% of the insured amount, there has been a rise in premium by, by 25% of the insured amount for senior citizens and to add to the chaos to add to the woes of citizens the insurance regulatory development authority has set an age of 65 years as the maximum entry for a standard policy affecting older uninsured citizens such age limits must be removed equitable health system is required in india and government should be the sole health care provider this pending recommendations of the planning commission should be a part of this policy. Government as the single largest player should not consider commercial aspects in determining cost and health provision. 
this should be followed when this, uh, this policy should also be followed when drugs are procured so we can conclude by saying that a legal fee reform is required so as to provide for a time bound transition from a universal to a universal state provider state provider of healthcare services under rights based framework at the same time private providers can be there but it, they should be only considered as an option and they, there shouldn't be any dependence on them public spending in healthcare should be as promised that is it should be increased to 2.5% 2, 2 of the gdp it should be spent on public healthcare infrastructure so that it should be universally accessible to all the citizens that is about the first article let's move on to the second article which is called delaying the inevitable so what are we delaying and what is inevitable all of you have heard of the insolvency bank all of you must have heard of the ibc or the insolvency uh, and bankruptcy code so this article is about the ibc and march 24th this was suspended and for 6 months again the finance minister has announced a suspension for another 6 months that is for a, the ibc has been in abeyance for a total period of 1 year so we will see what is ibc and when was it established why has it been in abeyance for 6 months and why has it been extended for another 6 months so first let's understand some words some terms that have been used in the article first is inevitable inevitable is an adjective which means something is bound to happen second is tardier which is an adjective which means delayed third abeyance is again a noun which means temporary suspension the next is harakiri which is a noun which means ritual suicide with sword and the next is a noun force measure which means unforeseeable circumstance let's move on to the next uh, to the first slide the insolvency and bankruptcy code has been kept in suspension in abeyance since till 31st march 2021 that is from 24th march 2020 to 20 to 31st march 2021 the threshold of loan defaults has been the threshold of loan defaults has been increased from 1 lakh to 1 crore due to large scale economic loss owing to the covid pandemic the government and government has announced that certain sections of the ibc Thank you.